Hello, I'm David Nabarro and I work in the United Nations. And today I'm going to speak about infectious diseases. In 2014, I was given the job of working on the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. And I'm going to talk about the threats of infectious diseases and specifically the lessons from the response to Ebola. Infectious diseases are caused by agents that are live and come into the body, like viruses, bacteria or fungi. And these diseases become outbreaks when one person infects more than one other before they're cured or before they die. The diseases tend to be transmitted from person to person through droplets in the air or by contagion, which means one person getting into contact with the body fluids of another person. More than 75% of infectious diseases start from animals. The worst infectious diseases are those that kill a high proportion of those who are infected, especially if there's no cure. One of the most well-known infectious diseases is influenza. Usually it doesn't kill many, but sometimes in the past it has. When major outbreaks of infectious diseases cause many deaths across wide geographical expanse, they're referred to as pandemics. Now, whenever there is a disease outbreak, there are serious consequences. There is fear as people in their communities try to understand the causes and consequences of what's happening. Communities and nations then become cut off from each other and from their neighbours. Economic activity suffers. People may not be able to earn their living. Medical facilities become strained. And sometimes there are even shortages of food and other resources as there's reduced trade or agriculture may be diminished. I'd like to talk some more about Ebola. The disease is a hemorrhagic fever, which means that when a person gets infected by the virus, she or he gets terrible diarrhea and bleeds from membranes in the body, and that includes from the mouth. It's caused by what's called a phylovirus, and these phyloviruses are usually found in animal reservoirs, often in bats, but occasionally the virus may jump into the human population. Ebola was first discovered 40 years ago in the Democratic Republic of Congo, which was at that time called Zaire. The disease was named after a river near to where it was first discovered. And at the end of 2013, it appeared in West Africa, apparently starting in a young boy who was playing under a tree, and it's thought that he was infected by faeces from a bat. This occurred in a remote area in Guinea, and the disease spread quite rapidly, but nobody knew at the beginning what it was. For several months early in 2014, there were reports of mysterious deaths in some interior parts of Guinea, but nobody quite knew why. But it was observed that people were tending to get ill as a result of funerals, and funerals in that part of the world generally tend to have elaborate rituals to make sure the soul of the departed goes to a good place. People started dying, initially perhaps 10 per week, but the number began increasing. And the outbreak spread into towns and communities across West Africa, where people were densely gathered together, not just in Guinea, but in neighboring Liberia and Sierra Leone as well. By August 2014, the number of cases of Ebola was doubling every three weeks. It's what we call an exponential increase. And the affected countries gradually got cut off from the rest of the world as the number of airlines willing to fly their planes to the countries gradually reduced. The disease spread further through small numbers into Nigeria, Senegal and Mali and some cases appeared in Europe and in the United States. Generally, because it's a highly infectious disease, treatment for Ebola is very difficult. The doctors and nurses, if they're going to avoid infection, have to wear special clothes. And if they don't, or if they are not careful when they take the clothes off and put them back on again, they might get sick themselves. And the people who look after patients who've got Ebola really are incredibly brave because it's such a frightening disease. 
Between August and December 2014, there was an enormous world response to the Ebola outbreak. Many treatment centers were built across the affected countries. Burial teams were recruited to take away bodies quickly and safely so that people would not be infected, and they had to do it in a dignified way too. The outbreak gradually slowed towards the end of 2014. Numbers of new cases in, of infections per week dropped from 100 down towards 50, then 40, then 30 during the early months of 2015. But getting to the end of the outbreak in late 2015 wasn't at all easy because the virus persisted in the body fluids, both in men and women who had survived infection. In the end, more than 2,800 people had Ebola disease and 11,000 died from it. And at least 10,000 brave people from the affected countries and as well from the rest of the world helped to bring it under control. What were the lessons? Firstly, be prepared. Act early when these diseases arise. And as much as possible, make sure they do not take root in the local populations. Second lesson, ensure that people and their communities are at the centre of the response. Third lesson, if you want to stop these kinds of disease outbreaks effectively, invest in basic health services everywhere and ensure that people understand risks to their health because such dangers are always lurking. Fourth lesson, be ready for new threats from these kinds of diseases arising anywhere, anytime. There's currently a new disease outbreak in Latin America caused by the Zika virus, and an old enemy called yellow fever seems to be returning in Africa. Public health specialists like me want to make sure that the world is prepared for these diseases because no one is safe. And most of us imagine that outbreaks only occur in poor countries, but we need to think again. Increasingly, it's being observed that many of the bacteria capable of causing major disease outbreaks are becoming resistant to antibiotics. That's a condition caused, called antimicrobial resistance. It generally refers to the emergence of superbugs resistant to commonly used antibiotics. And this development is causing anxiety. It was expressed last week in the meeting of the leaders of the group of G7 major nations of the world held in Japan. So while disease outbreaks are understandably disturbing, we must respond not with fear, but with clear-headed preparedness and concerted action. Being on our guard and acting on the basis of scientific evidence will go a long way towards mitigating the risks of disease outbreaks. And that is essential for a safe world of the future. Well, thanks very much indeed for this opportunity to speak. And if any of you want to find out more about this, do get in touch with me on nabarro at un.org. Thank you.